we've got, again, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ set to close at new records. The Dow not quite at that level again. But we've got tech, the information technology index within the S&P 500 that's leading gains. Not surprising, given that the NASDAQ's up more than the other major averages, up by about one and a quarter percent. The S&P up about eight tenths of one percent. The Dow, the laggard today, up just about a fifth of one percent. That's about 73 points. We do have utilities, the group that is lagging today, but along with tech, energy and communication services are leading the way higher. Well, Julie, it seems like the market is overlooking the macro here, which started with a big call from Apollo Global's chief economist, Torsten Slock, not expecting any rate cuts for 2024. In a note this morning, Slock wrote that the Fed will not cut rates this year and rates are going to stay higher for longer thanks to those stubborn inflation pressures. And Julie, it was interesting being at the stock exchange this morning because the traders themselves were talking about how this market continues to be so frothy and, you know, move forward on this AI driven rally. And I'm curious when the macro picture is going to start to impact that, particularly as earnings season starts to come to a close, what will be the catalyst for more of those highs that you were mentioning? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great question. I I mean, I want to linger on Torsten's call for just a second here because he's the first one who has said this, at least the first most prominent voice to have said, maybe we just won't get any cuts this year. And I think that the reasoning behind what he's saying is the reason that the market has held up relatively well, even in the face of delaying these rate cut uh, predictions. And that's that things are going pretty well, right? Yeah. From a macro perspective, that the economy, as he says in his note, is not slowing down, it is re-accelerating. That's the reason that we have some of these stubborn inflation readings for the month of January, even as, even the likes of Austin Gould's beyond the Fed are saying, January was sort of a one-off, and many other economists agree. But here you've got uh, Torsten saying super core inflation, which of course is one of the ones that is favored by the Fed, Fed, the measure favored by the Fed, Fed, Mm -hmm. the Fed is trending higher. Um, And so, you know, if, if if, if they're not cutting because the economy is relatively strong, maybe that's something that the market can still rally into, but I think it depends on how long it lasts. It's a great point that you bring up, though, this idea that why would they cut if they don't have a reason to yet? If they're not seeing any material weakness that indicates some type of sickness brewing in the economy, what would be the catalyst for cutting? And Barkin talked about that a little bit as well, saying that we don't necessarily need to push for cuts. uh, Bostic also saying, I'm willing to wait. I'm interested in, I feel like a year ago, the market would have been down on a yeah. day after hearing commentary like that. We're still record-breaking highs day after yeah. day. I guess NVIDIA beats the Fed is the takeaway. 